So here's another um, situation with trigonometric integrals that I want to show. And for this, for these type of examples, I want you to recall the power reducing formulas from trig. We're going to use these. Power reducing formulas from trigonometry. Not everybody goes through these in trig, but they're not difficult. Sine squared of x, so I'm taking a sine of degree two and I'm converting it into a cosine. I'm converting it into a cosine of degree one. Same thing with cosine squared. So you're reducing the power. That's why they're called the power reducing formulas. Okay, and these are the two that we're going to use because we're going to focus on sine and cosine. So I'm going to use these formulas now to basically find the or determine the trigonometric integrals that I'm going to show you in this case. So, first example, I have the integral of cosine squared of 3x dx. And so I want you to notice that, you know, looking at this right now, it's not a basic u sub. I don't have sine of x to do u substitution. And I'm not going to use the methods that I used in my last video with trigonometric integration because I don't have an odd degree here for cosine. And I can't, I don't have, you know, I, I need that extra something so that I can use u sub in, the, in there. So what I'm going to use is the power reducing formula. So when I have cosine squared of an angle, in this case, 3x takes the place of x. This is equal to 1 plus cosine of twice the angle over 2. So this is going to be equal to 1 plus cosine of twice the angle, 6x, all over 2 dx. So what happens when I do this, if you notice, is now I can separate this into, because this is a monomial on the bottom, a 1 half plus um, a cosine of 6x over 2 dx and I can now separate this into two different integrals I'm gonna take this one half here in front and it just becomes basic basic integration nice and easy in that case the only thing here is we could do the integral of cosine of an angle but this is cosine of 6x so I need an extra 6 so if I put an extra 6 here I need a 1 sixth in the front. So now when I integrate, we all know the um, antiderivative of 1 half in terms of x is 1 half x. Plus here I have this 1 twelfth in front, 1 twelfth. The um, antiderivative of cosine is just sine of the angle 6x plus c. And here is my answer. Much easier, I mean, less work than the last case, right? Because, you know, just a simple power reducing formula and separation. I don't have any extra sign or anything like that to make it more difficult. So in this case, I'm just gonna reduce it. Um, let me show you another one. Uh, I haven't done any definite integrals, so let's do one of those. I have, I'm going from zero to pi over two of sine to the uh, let's do, let's do sine to the fourth x dx. So again, if you think about it, um, I'm not going to use the methods that I used in the last video. I have an even exponent and just sine, so I can use the power reducing formula for sine, but this deals with sine squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as a sine squared squared. Okay, sine to the fourth, sine squared squared. So now, sine squared of x is equal to one minus cosine of twice the angle over two. So one minus cosine. The only difference between these two is for sine it's minus, for cosine it's plus. So one minus cosine of two x over two. So I have now from zero to pi over two of one minus cosine of two x all over 2 squared dx. Okay, so here I am after plugging in or, or using the power reducing formula for sine squared of x here. I have to obviously square this. So what I'm going to do is that 1 half is going to come to the front and it has to be squared. So I'm going to end up with the 1 fourth from 0 to pi over 2. 
And when I square this numerator, I'm going to get a 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x, all of this times dx. So I'm going to separate this into three different integrals to make it easier to focus on them um, for everyone. But this 1 fourth is still being multiplied by everything, so I want you to realize that that's going to get distributed. You can either distribute it now or do it later. It's up to you. So I'm going to have a 1 dx minus a 2 integral from 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of 2x dx um, plus the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of this cosine squared of 2x dx. Okay, um, so the first two are um, basic and easy to integrate. I'll probably distribute the 1 fourth now also. Um, notice in this situation here, the u, if I use u sub, would be 2x, so the du would be 2dx. So I would need a 2 here, which means I would have to divide by 2 here. This is 2 times dx. Um, so now when I integrate this 1 fourth, the integral of 1 dx is x. Minus 2 divided by 2 is 1. Um, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, sine of 2x plus, so this last part is the part, oh, sorry guys, I forgot to distribute that 1 fourth, right? Don't forget to distribute this 1 fourth here also, 1 fourth sine of 2x um, plus this one, notice is a cosine squared and that's an issue. Um, because I would need a sign to do u sub, so I can't do u sub for this one. However, because it's cosine squared, I can reduce the power with the power reducing formulas. Again, cosine squared of x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2. So what I can do is replace it with 1 plus cosine of double the angle 4x all over to dx. Okay, obviously, let me get to my next page here. So <clears throat> let me copy down the first two. I have this 1 4th x. 1 4th x. I have this minus 1 4th sine of 2x. Oops. Minus 1 4th sine of 2x. Um, plus 1 fourth, and I'm going to simplify this one, plus this 1 fourth. Now, I'm going to bring this 1 half out to the front. So 1 fourth times 1 half is 1 eighth, or I'll just write it in times the integral of 1 plus cosine 4x. 1 plus cosine of 4x times dx. Okay, now I'm, I'm not forgetting my limits. These all still have to be evaluated from 0 to pi over 2. I'm not forgetting that, but for now I'm not going to write it in just to focus on the uh, integration, and then I will write it in after. Okay, I'm going to separate this into two different integrals again just to show you. 1 dx plus this 1 eighth from 0 to pi over 2, cosine 4x. We kind of just did an, an integration just like this before. <clears throat> so it shouldn't be new. However, um, I want you to notice that if I use a basic u sub here, that, hold on one second, if I use a basic if I use a basic u sub here, my u is going to be 4, and my du is, my u sub is 4x, my du is 4dx, so I'm going to need a 4 in front of my dx, and therefore again, same thing as before, I'm going to have to divide by 4 in the front. Keep that in mind, same thing as before. So now I'm here, I have a 1 fourth x minus 1 fourth sine of 2x, <coughs> excuse me, plus 1 eighth. 
1 dx, 1 eighth x, uh, plus 1 eighth times 1 fourth is 1 32, or 1 over 32, and this is going to be a sine of 4x, not plus c, right? All evaluated from 0 to pi over 2 now. So I finally integrated everything, but now I have to evaluate it at 0 and pi over 2 because it's a definite integral. So first we're going to plug in pi over 2. 1 fourth times pi over 2. I'll show all my work. 1 fourth times pi over 2 minus 1 fourth times sine of 2 times pi over 2 plus 1 eighth times pi over 2 plus 1 over 32 times sine of 4 times pi over 2. All of this first minus 0 plugged in 1 fourth times 0 minus 1 fourth times sine of 2 times 0 plus 1 eighth times 0 plus 1 over 32 times sine of 4 times 0. Hopefully, we realize that this is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So all of the second stuff, it goes away, which is awesome because it makes it a little bit nicer to deal with after. And let's simplify the first part. 1 fourth times pi over 2 is pi over 8 minus 1 fourth times, <coughs> excuse me, sine of pi, hopefully you guys know is 0, plus pi over 16, plus 1 over 32 times sine of, I'm not going to write this, 4 times pi over 2 is 2 pi, sine of 2 pi is also 0. So this becomes pi over 8 plus pi over 16. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And I could pull these together into a single fraction, multiplying this by 2 and 2. So I get 2 pi over 16 plus pi over 16, which is finally 3 pi over 16.